Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to solve exercises 5 to 8 of chapter 4. In exercise 5, we have to deduce from the Goldstein lemma the fact that J of E is dense in the bidual of E for the weak star topology, okay, where J is the canonical injection from E to the bidual of E. E is here in normal space. The Goldstein lemma states that the image under J of the closed unit ball of E is the corresponding closed unit ball of the bidual. So we have to deduce that the whole the, the image of the whole space is dense in the bidual. Okay. This essentially follows from the linearity of J. So how do you prove that? You have to prove that the closure in the weak star topology of J of E is equal to E double star. And for this, it's enough to prove that E double star is contained in the closure because J of E and its closure all live in E double star. Okay, so how do you prove that? We take an element in the bidual psi and you prove that it is in the closure. How do you prove that? We use proposition 0 0.3 that tells us that this happens if every neighborhood of Xi meets J of E. So we have to prove, so we consider an arbitrary neighborhood V in the weak star topology of Xi, and we prove that it intersects J of E. Now, if Xi is zero, there's nothing really to prove because if Xi is zero, then Xi is in the unit ball of E double star, and so it is in the closure of uh, J of B E. So it meets J of B E, and therefore it meets J of E. Therefore, we assume that Xi is not zero, and therefore, when we can divide by the norm of Xi, and then Xi over its norm is, of course, in the unit sphere, so it's in the unit ball of the bidual. Now, as we know from uh, the definition of the weak star topology, that we can assume that this neighborhood is a basic neighborhood. Let us call it basic neighborhood. So it plays the role of a ball. So it's of the form, so there are finitely many elements, F1, Fk, in the dual and a positive number epsilon. So, so actually V contains a set of this form. So we have to prove that this set uh, meets J of E. So we'll have to find an X in E such that JX belongs to V, this V. Now, if we consider an analog set, the set U having the same form F as uh, F, but it's a neighborhood actually of not Xi, of Xi over its norm, okay, with the same elements, but a different radius. Okay, so now U is a neighborhood not of Xi, but it's a neighborhood in the weak star topology of Xi over its norm, which is, which is on the unit sphere. So, therefore, according to the Goldstein lemma, this neighborhood should meet J of BE at some point JX. Now, it's very easy to check. So Jx is here, which means that fi of, fi of Jx uh, minus xi over its norm is less than epsilon over its norm. So if you write this, actually, and then you multiply by xi, you will get precisely that the norm of xi times x, j of the norm of xi times x is actually in v. And, of course, it's in j of e because x is in, uh, in e, so any multiple of x is in e. So. Therefore, we found an element in the intersection, and therefore, Xi is in the closure of J of E with respect to the weak star topology. Okay, so take a paper and a pen and write this. Okay, so this concludes exercise five. Exercise six is an expected result. Two norm spaces, if two norm spaces are isomorphic, then they are both simultaneously reflexive or not. Okay. So if one of them is reflexive, then the other is necessarily reflexive. So, consider, since they are isomorphic, there exists an isomorphism, T, from E to F. To prove that, so assume that E is reflexive. So, to prove that F is reflexive, you have actually now three characterizations of, or actually more than, uh, more than three, actually. Uh, if you count them, you get eight characterizations of reflexivity, if you put them together. So what are the characterization of reflexivity? Uh, we have the Kakutani theorem that tells us that the closed unit ball is weakly compact. 
Eberlein Smolian weakly sequentially compact. An equivalent, another equivalent characterization is that every sequence, uh, every bounded sequence of the space has a weakly convergent subsequence. And we have, of course, the characterization that uh, the unit sphere of the bidual is contained in J of EM. So, okay, so here we are going to use the upper line Smolian theorem. So we consider an arbitrary bounded sequence YN of F, and you have to prove that it contains a weakly convergent subsequence. So if you consider now the image uh, under the inverse of this isomorphism of YN, you get a sequence actually in E. And since T minus 1 is a bounded linear operator, as you know, it bounds bounded sets into bounded sets. So if YN is bounded, then XN is also bounded. And since E is reflexive, it means by the Eberlein Smolian theorem that XN possesses a sequence X and K that converges weakly to some point X in E. And since T is bounded and linear, it is continuous weak weak. So it transforms weakly convergent sequences into weakly convergent sequences. So therefore T of X and K converges weakly to Tx. And therefore Y and K converges weakly to Tx. And that's it. Very simple. So we started from an arbitrary bounded sequence of F, and we extracted a conversion sequence, a weakly conversion sequence. Okay, so you should be able to uh, master this kind of uh, um, elementary reasoning. So this could be perfectly an examination, an examination question. Okay, so F is reflexive. Now, exercise seven. We stated part of it in the lectures. We have a normal space E. So first question we have to prove that if we consider a subspace, a linear subspace, M of E, we have to show that the topology on M, the subspace topology on M, or the topology inherited from the weak topology of E, coincides with the weak topology on M. Because now actually we have, in principle, we have two topologies. The actually more than uh, actually four topologies, if you like, because we have the norm topology on E and the weak topology on E. We have the norm topology on M, which is actually the subspace topology inherited from the norm topology, and we have uh, the weak topology on M on its own. The first two coincide actually because uh, the norm topology on M is just. As you know from second year, it's, it's the same as the subspace topology. Okay. So now we have to prove the same thing for the weak topology. So, and in the second question, we have to show that if E is reflexive and M is closed, then M is reflexive. And third question, if E is a Banach space, then E is reflexive if and only if its dual is reflexive. Okay. Now. I will explain what do I mean by this in greater detail. So, this, because this may be confusing for you if you um, <clears throat> don't know enough general topology. So, so let us concentrate now on the weak topology. So, we have uh, a priori two topologies on them. The weak topology, sigma M M star, which is by definition the smallest topology on M that makes all linear bounded uh, or all elements in M star continuous. Okay, This is sigma M M star. And we have the topology inherited from sigma A E star, which is also called the subspace topology, which is by definition the intersection with M of a weakly open subset in E. Okay. So we have to prove that these two collections coincide. Okay, so First inclusion, sigma M M star is contained in the subspace topology. So consider an, an open an element capital U in sigma M M star, in the weak topology of M. We have to prove that it is a set of the form M intersected with a weakly open set of E. Okay? So consider an element X0 in E. Then since U is uh, an open set in the weak topology of M, then we can assume that U is a basic set. So we can assume that U has this special form. Uh, so there are finitely many, there is a finite, finitely many elements in the dual Fi, the dual of M actually. 
Okay, so F I is a linear continuous map from M into R. Okay, such that F I of X minus X zero and absolute value is less than epsilon for every I in this finite set I. Could write them F one F K. Same thing. Now. But how to get an element from the element fi in m star, an element fi in e star? Okay? This is where the Hanna-Banner theorem comes in. We can extend fi, which is an element in m star, to an element in e star. And with the same norm, if you like. So denote this extension, which is not unique in general, by G, uh, gi. So GI is the same as FI, but it's now defined on the bigger space E, right? not just on M. Okay. Therefore, if we let V to be the same set as U, but instead of FI, we let GI. Now this is a set which is weakly open in the weak star topology of E. So this set belongs to sigma of E star. And what is the difference between U and V? Actually, U is just the intersection of V and M, okay? because this is just basic set theory. If you intersect V with, with M, we'll just get U. And that's it. So, therefore, we started from an element in the weak topology of M, and we showed that it is a set in the subspace topology inherited from sigma E star. That's it. Now, we have to prove the reverse conclusion. So, we take now an element of this form and show that it contains an element of this and set of this form. So the view is now is open in the subspace topology, so it's necessarily an intersection of a not weakly open set of E and M. And as we know from, we can assume that V is uh, a set of this form now, okay? where, of course, X0 is just an element in U. Okay? Same thing. And now it's easier because now we just have an, we don't have to extend ji because it's already extended we just have to restrict ji to m okay so so fi is just basically gi and therefore when we restrict gi to the subspace m we get an element still still linear and continuous but now it's defined on m so it's an element in the dual and now uh, u is so u is just uh, the set which is by definition weakly Open, it belongs to sigma m m star. It's weakly open in m. Yeah. Therefore, this is what we shall do in practice. Uh, the two collections coincide. <coughs> okay, now, second question we have to show that if m is closed in E, it's a subspace. Okay. Not just a subset, it's a subspace. So, uh, Linear subspace. So we have to show that if E is reflexive, then M is reflexive. Okay. Now, and for this, we use, of course, uh, Kakutanian's theorem. So to prove that M is reflexive, we prove that its closed unit ball, B, capital B sub M, is weakly closed. So it belongs, so it's, it's weakly closed with respect to either the weak topology sigma MM star or the restriction of the weak topology on E on M. So now the unit ball B sub M is just the intersection with M and the unit ball of E, the larger space. Since E is reflexive, Capitani tells me that B is compact in the weak topology of E. But since M is closed and convex, it's weakly closed okay, by exercise one. Therefore, what we, can we say about the intersection of these two actually now? This is a closed set in a compact space. Therefore, it's compact. And so, once again, I just use Kakutani again, which tells me that M is reflexive. Okay. So, this is again a typical examination problem. You should understand very well this argument. Okay. We need the fact that M is weakly closed because to prove that BM is compact, it must be closed actually because. Uh, the space is Hausdorff. Okay, <clears throat> so the result is not true actually if M is not closed, because <clears throat> okay. a, a subset of a compact space need not be compact; it must be closed in order to be compact. Okay. Last exercise, 
E is reflexive if and only if E star is reflexive. Okay, so suppose first that E is reflexive. Then we know from the lectures that the weak topology uh, on E star is the same as the weak star topology. Okay, you observe that because, by definition actually, because uh, sigma of E star, E double star is the collection, is the smallest topology making all xi in E double star continuous. And this is the smallest topology making all elements in J of A, in J of E continuous. But if J is reflexive, these two collections coincide. So we already observed that. Now, by the banach alawa burbaki theorem in E star, this uh, the closed unit ball of uh, E star is compact for the weak star topology. And therefore, it's compact for the weak topology. Okay. And therefore, by Kakutani theorem, E star is reflexive. Very easy. So, once again, this is a typical argument. Now, conversely, suppose that E star is reflexive. Then, if you apply the first part to E star instead of E, we get that the bi-dual the dual of the dual is reflexive. So E double star is reflexive. Okay. Now, since the canonical injection is an isomorphism between E and its image, and we, we are assuming here that E is a Banach space, okay? we have to assume that. Because otherwise, if a, reflexive, a reflexive space must be complete, as you know. I don't know if you've thought about this, but why a, subs, why, why a reflexive space is necessarily complete? <clears throat> because if it's reflexive, it's isomorphic to, uh, to it's bi-dual, and a dual space is always complete, even if E is not complete. Okay. okay, so now what do we have? We have E is a Banach space, and we have an isomorphism between E and its image, J of E. And we know that isomorphism conserve completeness, so J of E is complete, and, the, and therefore it's strongly closed in the bi-dual. It's a complete subspace closed. Now, therefore, it's closed, and since it's convex because it's a subspace, then it's closed in the weak topology of E double star, which is, as we know, is the same as the weak star topology on E double star, okay? because E double star is reflexive. Okay? If it's reflexive, then the weak topology on E double star and the weak star topology on E double star are the same. The same thing, same thing here, actually. So now, by the Goldstein lemma, J of E is dense in E double star for the weak star topology and therefore for the weak topology. <clears throat> and therefore, J of E is equal to it because it's closed, actually. So J of E is equal to E double star being uh, dense and closed. So, uh, and therefore that's it. So J is surjective. J of E is equal to, to E double star. Therefore, E is reflexive. Okay. Now, there's another proof, actually, uh, if you don't like this. We can reason as follows. A J of E is what is it? It's also reflexive. Why? Because it's a closed subspace of a reflexive space. Because e, so if E star is reflexive, then E double star is reflexive. And J of E is a closed subset, strongly closed subs, subs, subspace of uh, E double star. Therefore, it's itself reflexive. But according to exercise, uh, the previous exercise, actually, yeah, five, exercise five, uh, two isomorphic spaces are simultaneously reflexive, so E is reflexive. Maybe this we find this a little bit simpler, simpler than invoking the Goldstein lemma. Okay, so we need in both reasonings. We needed the complete to assume that E is complete. Okay, so this concludes exercise seven. Last exercise that you mentioned in uh, the lectures. If you have a Banach space, then E is reflexive if and only if the weak topology and the weak star topology coincide. We already proved one implication and we used it before. Now we have to prove the converse. I told you that the converse is true, but uh, it needs, it requires some uh, deeper tools. It doesn't follow from the definitions, actually. Okay. 
So if E is reflexive, then these two topologies coincide. This is just this is a consequence of, of the definition. But the converse is not a consequence of the definition directly. So need some words. Okay, so, but now we have the two. So uh, by the banach alawgulu burbaki theorem, uh, the closed unit ball of E star is compact for the weak topology. And therefore, it's compact for the weak star topology. Because <clears throat> they coincide. And now, by Kagutanus theorem, E star is reflexive, and according to the previous exercise, E is reflexive. That's it. And there's another way of... Uh, uh, we can use exercise 4 of the previous video, actually. Uh, yeah. So we can reason as follows. <clears throat> so we have to prove that uh, J is surjective. So we take an element, Xi, in the bidual, and we want to prove that Xi belongs to J of E. So... Now, by definition of the of the weak topology, xi is uh, is continuous for the weak topology, okay. And therefore, it's continuous for the weak star topology because they coincide. By exercise four of the previous video, xi must belong to J of E, and that's it. So. This also can be asked in the exam. So this concludes this video. Thank you for attention and see you next time.